In these problems, you are evaluating, but pay close attention because some are addition and some are subtraction. I'm going to do problem six over here to the side. When you are adding and subtracting with decimals, it's very important to keep your decimal places lined up. And in any place value gaps, we can add a zero. This is an addition problem. Zero plus one plus zero is one. Three plus zero plus nine is 12. One plus three plus zero plus zero is four. Keep your decimal spot lined up. Two plus four is six. Continue with problems one through five, either adding or subtracting and paying special attention to that decimal spot. Play the lucky 13 game. The winner is the player whose score is closest to 13 after six rounds. We are going to roll the dice and then write the sum of the numbers you roll. Choose whether to add the roll to your score or subtract the roll from your score. Remember, the closest to 13 is going to win. It says write an expression that shows how you calculated your score. So we're going to start by rolling two dice. I ended up with a 4 and a 5. It says to write the sum of the numbers. Well, 4 plus 5 is 9. And then we decide if we're going to either add or subtract from our score before. So I have 13, I'm gonna subtract nine. 13 minus nine gives me a score of four. Then we're rolling again. This time four plus four is eight. I'm gonna add eight to my score from before. Four plus eight is 12. This time I have three. 2 plus 1 is 3. I'm going to add 3. 12 plus 3 is 15. Now I have 7. If I'm trying to get back to 13 to keep my score close, I'm going to subtract the 7. 15 minus 7 would be 8. Now I have nine. I'm gonna add nine since I'm below 13 now. Eight plus nine is 17. And now I have seven. Four plus three is seven. So I'm gonna subtract seven to get closer to 13. 17 minus seven is 10. If you have a dice at home or die at home, you can roll that and put in your own values to see if you get closer to 13 than I did. It says to write an expression that shows how you calculated your score. An expression doesn't typically have an equal sign, so it would just be this piece. And then my score came out to 10. So we're going to start by using eight linking cubes. And then we're going to add seven. So, so far, I have 8 and 7 more makes 15, and then we're going to add 2 more, which would give me 17. 
does it matter if I change the order in which these cubes are stacked? Like if I put the yellow on top of that and then the green on top of those, or if I started with the green first and stacked the yellow on top and then the white on top of that, does my answer change if I change the order in which I add? No. Every time I'm going to end up with 17 cubes. You can see here that they've added in the original order and ended up with 17. But even if we changed and put the green ones next or switch the yellow and the white, the order changing does not change that the outcome of those was 17. And that's called the commutative property. Addition has the commutative property where the order doesn't matter. For problem two, we're going to start with eight cubes again. And then we're going to add seven. And then we are going to remove or subtract two. So we had eight, we added seven, and then we removed two. How much do we have here? We had 13. Now we're going to fill in the blanks with the numbers eight, seven, and two in five different orders and use our cubes to mod model each expression. Write the resulting number of the cubes in the stack. So what if instead we started with eight and we added two and then subtracted seven? So here's our eight, then we're going to add two, and then we're going to remove one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. How much is left now? Well, it only took off six. We need one more. There we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have three remaining. So we can write that this one came out to three. What if we started with eight, seven, and two? That gave us 13. What if we put the seven in front? We started with seven, we added two, that would give us nine, and we subtracted eight, that gives us one. What if we start with seven and add eight? Seven plus eight is 15, and we subtract two, that gives 13. What if we started with the two? We added eight and then removed seven. Two plus eight is 10. Then we remove seven, that leaves us with three. Oh, and it looks like I repeated one up here, so I'm gonna change that one to the other possible answer. We had two, we added seven, and we subtracted eight. Two plus seven is nine. Nine minus eight is one. So there's several different outcomes depending on the order in which you add and which you subtract. When we had just addition, we could change the order and we always got the same number. But with subtraction here, you can see that that's not always the case. Sometimes we get the same number. I see there's two ones, two thirteens, and two threes. But subtraction is not commutative. The order in subtraction does matter. We are going to evaluate these problems by moving from left to right. So we're going to start by adding 11 plus 9 is 20, and then subtracting the 6. 20 minus 6 is 14. This one tells us to do the subtraction first. 11 minus 9 is 2, and 2 plus 6 is 8. 
9 plus 6 came first here. 9 plus 6 is 15. And then we subtract the 11. 15 minus 11 is 4. Try and solve D, E, and F independently. And then come back and check your work. Pause the video here to give yourself some time to try solving these problems. This one, it's the same type of process, but now you have more terms. So I'm going to start with the complicated ones, and then you can try the simpler ones on your own. 25.2 minus 21. Remember, the line up the decimal places. 2 minus 0 is 2. 5 minus 1 is 4. 2 minus 2 is 0. So that takes care of these pieces. Then it tells us to add 10. Zero plus two is two, zero plus four is four, one plus nothing is 14. I think I said that wrong. And then we need to subtract 1.4, 14.2 minus 1.4. We'll have to regroup here. This turns into a 3, and that one turns into a 12. 12 minus 4 is 8. Make sure your decimals are lined up. 3 minus 1 is 2. 1 minus nothing is 1. So we end up with 12.8 for this problem. For these, it would be helpful if they all had the same denominator. Here I see two 15s. To turn a 5 into a 15, I need to multiply by 3. So 4 times 3 is 12. 5 times 3 is 15. 1 times 3 is 3. 5 times 3 is 15. We're going to start by subtracting 12 minus 3 is 9. Then we are going to subtract 9 fifteenths by 2 fifteenths. 9 minus 2 is 7. And then we are going to subtract again. 7 fifteenths minus 3 fifteenths leaves us with 4 fifteenths. Here we're going to add 2.5 plus 2.5 gives us 5. Five plus two and a half is seven and a half. Seven and a half plus two and a half would be ten. Ten minus point two is nine point eight. Minus 0 0.2 again would be 9.6. Minus 0 0.2 again would be 9.4. And again would be 9.2. And one more time would leave us with 9. Now you don't have to write all this out if you can keep track of those in your head, making sure you um, add or subtract accordingly. Give A, B, and C a try. Pause here and then come back and check your answer once you've had a second to give those an attempt.
Noah plays the lucky 13 game and calculates his score as shown. What number did Noah roll on his last turn, and how do you know? Well, let's do the math that he had so far. 13 plus 3 would be 16. 16 minus 12 would be 4. 4 plus 11 would be 15. 15 minus 3 would be 12. 12 plus 6 is 18. So 18 minus some number is 14. 18 minus 4 is 14. We knew that the answer to his previous rolls was 18. Ryan plays the lucky 13 game too. Ryan's rolls are exactly the same as Noah's. However, Ryan subtracts when Noah adds, and he adds when Noah subtracts. Write an expression that shows how Ryan calculates his score. Does Ryan get the same score as Noah? So we're changing. If it was an addition, it's now a subtraction. If it was subtraction, he did the opposite and added. If we subtract 13 minus 3 is 10. Ten plus twelve is twenty two. Twenty two minus eleven is eleven. Eleven plus three is fourteen. Fourteen minus six is eight. And eight plus four is twelve. So does Ryan get the same score? Ryan does not get the same score as Noah. Please make sure your warm-up and your workbook are filled in for Lesson 1 of Module 4.